Hello, hello, my friends, and welcome back. I am Jules, and I noticed you liked my uh, colleague Andre's uh, videos about uh, the new game we're doing, uh, the platformer games. So um, I thought I'd um, keep you up to date with another one of our projects, which is a match three game. Um, like most of you will know it, a uh, Candy Crush style game. And um, it's based off of um, Mr. Tuft Creates YouTube channel uh, tutorial. Um, I'll put a link uh, in the description below to his channel so you can see the original one. Uh, so basically, you know how it works. It's going to be a Candy Crush style game where um, we'll have a, a crypto theme. So, uh, eventually there will be a little banner down here, down under the game screen, and that's going to produce some money, which will be won by the people who play this game. So you will be winning uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Monero, and Litecoin, Litecoin and Ripple. You will have a choice between uh, these five coins and uh, we will send them to you when you reach a uh, minimum withdrawal requirement. So let's get on to it. Um, don't mind the, the graphics, they're not uh, finished yet, they're not even close to being finished, but uh, yeah, that's going to be the style. So we hit play, uh, we've got a few levels, the first one is obviously the easiest. Um, you win very easily. Then level 2 is a bit more difficult, you've got 30 of these blue things to, to destroy. Um, we'll just, um, I think I'm gonna fast forward this bit. Right, so now I'm going to show you a little bit of the code. So, it's quite a bit uh, of code here. Uh, you've got about 950 lines of code in the main script, which is the grid one. Uh, you can see it's all in here. It's quite, quite a bit. I'm going to try and explain a little bit about what's going on in here. So basically, the grid script handles where all the pieces go. Uh, as you can see, um, well, the state machine just decides whether or not you are allowed to move pieces right now because once you've made a um, match, you won't be able to uh, move any pieces until um, all the other pieces have fallen back in, if that makes any sense to you. Uh, so, grid variables, wide height, um, x start and y start, and offset. That's just to decide whereabouts all the different pieces go, and uh, where they need to be in the game. Right, obstacle stuff, this is just, uh, you know, the, the pieces that are not supposed to be able to be moved until you release the locks. We've got empty spaces, obviously, ice spaces, which um, I was going to show you how they look. Right, I'll just make a quick... Oh, there we go. I've got it over here. Right. So, we've got empty spaces, ice spaces, and swirls, these are just uh, sort of locked, locked pieces. So, um, if you do a match, they will fall into place, and you can destroy them if you make a match near them. Uh, the same with the ice, um, ice spaces, you make a match on them, and you're going to open them up. Right, that's about it, so back to the script. 
uh, we've got log spaces and concrete, uh, just like the chocolate and licorice in, in um, Candy Crush, I keep forgetting. Slime spaces which uh, expand and uh, like take over the whole board if you don't um, get rid of them. And the sword spaces, the ones you saw blacked out earlier. Uh, the signals to make and to damage these uh, these pieces. We've got the preset board, uh, preset board, the hints. There's a hint option if you've noticed when you um, when you start. If you don't do anything for like half a second, the hint is going to appear like this one. It's going to flash until you move it or move something else. That's what that hint is all about. Okay, so moving on, swap back variables. Um, in case you do a, a move that's not going to cause a match, this function, well, this variables uh, that, that have a function later on will decide to move them back because you haven't made a match so if that makes sense to you then that's perfect uh, touch variables obviously scoring variables um, update counter to update the counter towards the goal check the goal that's uh, to check the goal every time you've made a match uh, and when the goal is reached then we have a win situation Coral bombs, collectibles like the sinker one, sinker stuff in uh, in Candy Crush, particle effects and animated effects, play sun, place camera. Right, we we've come down to the functions. So this is the ready function, the move camera, restricted fill, which I was talking about earlier, the obstacles which can be empty spaces, concrete spaces, and slime spaces. Sorry about that. Uh, restrict move, which are the lock spaces. Uh, this function takes care of deciding whether or not a uh, piece is in the array, which it should be. Um, and it shows it if it is in the array, and it doesn't show it if it's not. If that makes sense. Uh, this one removes it from the array. This one makes the array. Uh, after all that is decided, we're going to spawn the pieces. We need to spawn the pieces at the start of the game, and then again when you have when you make a match, the pieces get destroyed, and then we need to spawn other pieces to fall down uh, and um, take their place. Hopefully, all this makes sense. Um, I know I'm not a very good, um, not very good at explaining stuff, but hopefully you get what I mean. Uh, sinker pieces, spawn ice, locks, concrete, slime, swirls, and spawn sinkers. Preset places, right, not important. Uh, the function that checks for matches, the function that turns the grid into pixels and then the pixels into grid, very important. Uh, the function that checks it if um, a piece is in the grid, the touch input uh, function, the swap pieces function, the one that decides like when you click this uh, this piece and this piece, it decides if they can be moved and if they should be moved. Color bomb, store info, that's just a helper method for, for another function. Swap bank, the one that I was telling you about, uh, move the previously swapped pieces back to the previous place if there was no match detected. Touch difference and process delta, these are just uh, helper functions. Extra input, find matches, this is one of the most important functions in the code. Um, when this one finds a match, it, it checks every time uh, you make a move. Um, Basically, it dims it uh, for like half a second. Then it deletes those matched pieces. So yeah, 
um, bomb pieces destroy timer. This is the timer that uh, dims it for like half a second and then destroys it. Bomb pieces add to array when a new piece is spawned. This function adds it to the array. This checks for uh, null uh, pieces and adds them, adds them to the array if they are not null and doesn't if they are. Match and dim, the, the function we've used here that dims the pieces before they are destroyed. Find bones. Uh, we've got uh, somewhere on here we've got yeah uh, row bombs, column bombs, adjacent bombs, and color bombs. So uh, that's the function that creates bombs. Change bombs, destroy matched, the one I was telling you about that destroys the pieces if they are uh, matched. And decides whether or not you can move. Make effect is just uh, animates. Check concrete, check slime, check swirls, damage swirls, damage liquorice are actually locks. The X bars and don't let you move the pieces. Let me special for everything else like uh, concrete slime and swirls. Match color, obviously. Clear board. Collapse columns. Uh, when a match is detected, um, the pieces spawn above the grid, if you know what I mean, and then uh, this function collapses them. Uh, refill columns, um, about the same thing. After refill, we have to check again if there's any spaces, if damage slime, move checked, or all the rest. So then we generate the slime, we find the normal neighbors, match all in column, all in row, find adjacent pieces, obviously, destroy the sinkers, switch pieces. Uh, this is also a very important function. If this function detects a deadlock, like there's no moves available, um, it basically creates a copy of the all pieces in the array and randomizes them so they don't end up in the same place. So then it checks again. If there's a deadlock again, it does it again until um, it finds a possible move. Switch and check. Copy array. Clear and store board. Uh, just helper functions for the other main important things. This one shuffles the board, uh, as I was telling you about, if it's deadlocked. Then you have a switch and check up, which shuffles the board. So, find all matches, this is also quite important. Generate hint. Right, so, we've still got a few functions here. Uh, camera effect, this, uh, when uh, you destroy, uh, when you match three or more uh, and they get destroyed, the camera kind of shakes towards you. Uh, the timer I was telling you about, that uh, dims them for half a second. Collapse timer, refill timer, these all have to do with the delay between the moment you make a match and what happens next. Um, Lock remover, concrete remover, slime remover, the shuffle timeout, the hint timer, you know, it's telling you if you don't move a piece for like three seconds, it's going to show you a, time, a hint. Uh, this is the timer that handles that. Uh, the boosters, game manager, uh, game manager won, game manager lost, and grid change. That's about it for the main uh, script. We've got a few more other scripts that are a bit too long for me to go through right now. Um, <clears throat> game manager, get game data manager, and uh, all sorts of others, and obviously all the um, game-related thingies up here. Uh, there's quite a few of them. <clears throat> so that's.
that's about it. Just a short uh, recap of what's going on here. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. So, uh, thanks for watching. If you found it mildly interesting, then subscribe for more. We're going to show you... I think I'm going to make a longer video where I'm going to show you um, from A to Z how to make a game like this. Uh, you can obviously watch Mr. Taft's uh, tutorial. Uh, it is quite long though, but it's very well explained. So I, uh, if, if you really want to make a game like this, I advise you to watch it. And yeah, that's about all. Share, like, comment, and subscribe for more. So that's about it. Thanks for watching. I'm Jules. I'll see you next time.